Okay, so in this video, we're going to see how to install multiple apps in Brew. In the previous video, we saw how to install Brew. So if you don't know how to do that, go and watch that video first. So how to install multiple apps using Brew. The Brew file is just a file that has a list of the apps that are installed by Homebrew. We can run this command, Brew Bundle Dump, to generate this file. Okay. I'm just going to do this as an example. You don't need to do it. I'm going to do it so you can see what the file looks like. We're going to generate the file in this directory that we're creating. So let me run these commands. I'm going to open my terminal. Make this bigger. Okay. That generated the file. To see the file, we have here the command. It's listed here. The proof file was created in this directory. If you don't want to specify the directory where the proof file is going to be stored, you can just simply run this command and it's going to save it in the directory that you're in. Just as an example, currently I'm in the home directory. I'm going to run the command there. And the file was created in this directory. So in case that you want to install the apps that are listed in a brew file, we can do it with this command. We use the brew bundle command. Let me give it a try. Okay. In this case, in the previous video, we installed Git, NeoFetch, and Visual Studio Code. So that's why it didn't install anything because we already have those apps installed. In, in this case, we specified the directory, but if you just run the command, it's gonna look for a file in the same directory called brew file and look for that file, okay? Okay, so if you want your terminal to look like mine, we need to install a few apps as a base, okay? And you can see the list of those apps here. Okay, so this is a brew file that I have stored in my GitHub repo. We have wget, fcf, git, node, starship. We need to install all these. Some of them are command line tools. We'll go over them in future videos. So this command gets the contents of the brew file that we have here in GitHub and passes it directly to brew. So a brew file is not going to be created. So we're going to run this command to install the apps that we have listed here. This is going to take a few minutes to install all the apps. So I'm going to skip this part and see you when it's done. Okay, so the installation is complete. The only app that was not installed is Git because we already installed that in the previous video. The rest of them are command line tools that we'll use in the in this video series. So I'll explain what each of them does in future videos. Okay, so the apps below are optional. I use NeoVim as my main editor, so I'm going to install it. And this um, this also includes a few other apps that I use every day. You don't need to install them. These are optional. But if you want to see what those are, you can find them here. Here's the proof file. Here's NeoVim and some dependencies for NeoVim. And some other tools that I use every day. These are not essentials. Chrome, Obsidian, Spotify, and some other ones, which I'm going to install right now using this command below. The installation for this is going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to skip and see you when it's done. Okay, so the installation is now completed. The only package that was not installed is NeoFetch because we installed that in the previous video, but the rest of them have been installed. Okay, 
Now, some apps have caveats that need to be taken care of so that the apps work. When you install an app, you can find them at the bottom. But the caveats for each one of the apps that I use, we will take care of them in the next video, which is related to my thought files. So you don't have to manually fix those caveats. We'll fix them there. If you want to see which apps are installed, we can run a brew list command. Here we can see all the apps that we have installed, including dependencies. And uh, let's look at the info for some of the apps. We're going to see the info for this one. Under caveats, it says here that to activate this, you need to add the following at the end of your ZSHRC file. There's this other one as well. Let's look at this. If you run the info command, you can see the caveats at the bottom. It also says here that to activate this, you need to add this line to your ZSHRC file. Otherwise, these apps are not going to work. For example, this one, Starship, this is not going to show you the caveats at the bottom. If you notice here, it doesn't say anything about something that needs to be fixed. But in the main page, you will be able to see the instructions, installations, and set up your shell. We're using ZSH. So it says here, add the following to the end of your file. This You don't need to do this right now because we will fix all of the caveats in the next video. This is optional. Just in case you want to see the caveats for each one of the apps that you have installed, you can run this script. I'm going to run it. You're going to see all of them at the bottom. It's going to take some time, so I'm going to pause and see you when it's done. Okay, now this is done. You can see all the caveats at the bottom. If you want to go through them, it's fine. You can see them. But remember, this is not going to fix anything. This is just so you can list all of them. So uh, don't worry about caveats right now. We will fix them in the next video, which is the dot .files video. If you want to go and see that video, you can find it here. So I'll see you there.